Today, we're going to use the Django REST framework to build an oversimplified API. But before we get started, let's take a quick look at what it is and its purpose. So while Django is a Python based framework for building out web applications, the Django REST framework is a library we can use with it to help us build out APIs. So whether you're looking to build a public API or an API to simply distribute data to your own applications, the Django REST framework is a great tool to use. So for our project today, we'll build an API to display all the items in our database and an endpoint for adding new items all through this API. Let's start from scratch by installing the latest version of Django using pip and then create a new project using the start project command and call your project my project. Once our boilerplate files are created, go ahead and open up your project files in a text editor and then we'll jump back into our command prompt because we still need to install the Django REST framework package. To do this, let's go ahead and run pip install Django REST framework all as one word. Now in your text editor, go ahead and open up the settings file and add REST underscore framework to the list of installed apps. There's multiple ways to configure our API, but my personal preference is to keep my API separate from all of the other apps inside of my project. So let's go ahead and create a new folder in the root directory of our project and call it API. And inside of this API folder, go ahead and create an init file. Just in case you missed it, there's double underscores before and after init. In this new API folder, we'll also want to create some views and URLs. So let's start by creating a views.py file. In the views file, let's first import the response class from rest underscore framework dot response. And this response object will take in any Python data or already serialized data that we pass into it and will render it out as JSON data. Because we are using function based views, we'll also need to import the API view decorator and we're going to use this with all of our views. Now that we have the two imports that we need, let's create our first view and call it get data. Above the view, we'll use the API view decorator and pass in the get method into the list of allowed methods. We can always add more methods such as post, put and delete to this list. But at this point, we're only going to return some data. So the get method is the only one that we'll need. And for the return method, let's just use the response object that we just imported. We'll create some models and return back some real data in a minute. But before we talk about serializing models, let's just set a Python dictionary with some key value pairs and pass this into the response object. Remember that once this dictionary is passed into the response, this will be output as JSON data. Okay, so we have our view and now it's time to create an endpoint to see what this outputs. Let's add in a URLs.py file into the API folder. And in this folder, let's make some basic imports like our path function and our views. And below our views, let's go ahead and create a URL patterns list and let's use the path function to set some endpoints and pass in the get data view. Let's jump back into the root directory of our project and connect our root URLs.py file to the new URLs inside of the API folder. Okay, so at this point we have the basics configured and now we're ready to see the output. Let's make sure our server is running and open up the website on the following port. Okay, awesome. If you're seeing this output, it means that everything is working as it's supposed to. The Django REST framework gives us this easy to use interface with our API and it makes things much more readable and easier to understand. If you want to see this output as raw data, we can click on the drop down menu in the top right, go ahead and select JSON and this will append a format in the URL and return back some data as raw JSON data without an interface. Okay, so all we did was configure the Django REST framework and render out some data, but now I want to return back some real data. For this, we'll create some models and migrate our database. After we add some data, we'll serialize this data and output it instead of the static data that we currently have. I want to replicate how I would separate my API from my apps in a real project. So let's open up the command prompt and use the star app command to create a new app. And let's go ahead and call it base. Once the app is created, let's go ahead and jump into our settings.py file and register the app inside of the installed apps. Within the new app folder that we just created, let's go into the models.py file and add a model called item. In order to speed things up, I'm just going to paste in some code that I already have pre-written for this item model. This model will only contain two attributes. It's going to have a name, which will be a string value and a created attribute that will contain a timestamp for when each instance is created. Once our model is created, let's go ahead and run some migrations by calling the make migrations command and then apply these migrations by calling the migrate command. To add some data, let's open up our terminal and run python manage.py and then the shell command. This will give us an interactive shell to start working with our data. When the shell is ready, we'll first need to import the item model from base.models. 
to create an item, let's get the item model and use the create method to set the item name. I'll just keep it simple and call the item item one. I'll leave it up to you to decide how much data you want to add here. But what I'm going to do here is just run this command two more times. And I'm just going to change the item number from two and three. Just to make sure everything was done correctly, let's query all the items in the database and print them out in the terminal. Okay, so everything looks good so far. Let's go ahead and exit the interactive shell and start up the server. Let's jump back into our API folder and add in a new file called serializers.py. In this file, we're going to need to create model serializers because the response object cannot natively handle complex data types such as Django model instances. So we'll first need to serialize this data before we can actually render it out. So we'll create serializers for our item model and all this will do is convert instances of our items from objects into data types the response object can understand. So in serializers.py, we'll start by importing serializers from rest underscore framework, and then we'll import the item model from the base app. Next, we'll create our serializer class, and this can be called anything you want, but I tend to stick with a model name followed by the word serializer. Our item serializer will inherit from the model serializer class. We'll set the inner meta class, and then we'll set the two required attributes, and in this case, it's going to be the model and the fields that we want to serialize. We can pass in a list of fields here, but in our case, I just want to serialize all the fields, so we'll just leave this as all. Now that we have our item serializer, let's jump back into our views and import our item model, and then the new serializer that we just created. Inside of our get data view, we'll get rid of any dummy data and query all the items from our database. Once we've queried the data, we'll need to serialize these items before we can return them, so let's first set the serializer variable and use the item serializer class. In the serializer, we'll pass in the items, and then we'll set many to true. Setting this value to true simply tells our serializer that we're going to serialize multiple items, whereas if we only wanted to return back one item, we would set this to false. In the response, we'll throw in our serializer, and in particular, we want to return back the data value. Alright, so let's jump back into the browser and see what the output is to this new view. In the response, we can now see all the items we added to the database output as JSON data. Okay, so that looks great, but let's add in one more endpoint to see how you can add data with your API. In the views.py file, let's start by creating a new view and calling it add item and make sure we add in a decorator and set post to the list of methods that are allowed because we are about to make a post request. We have a lot of options and how we can handle this next part, but the method I want to use is to use the serializer class itself and pass in all the data to this class and let it deal with all the functionality and creating an item and actually validating the data that was sent from the front end. So to do this, let's set the serializer variable to the item serializer and inside of the item serializer, we're going to set the data value and in this value, we're going to pass in the data that was sent from the front end on that post request. Once the data is passed into the class, we can check if this is valid data the same way you would check with a model form using the isValid method. If everything checks out, let's just call the save method. This will create a new item in the database and then let's return the newly created item in the response. Last thing we'll do is create a URL path for this new endpoint and then we'll pass in this new view. Once the view is set, let's go back into the browser and check out this new endpoint. So we'll open up the root URL and we'll just add in that new path that we created. First thing we'll see is an interface telling us that a get method is not allowed and we can change this directly from the interface. So let's scroll down and actually send some data using a post method. In this text area, we can add in any data that we want here and then send it as a post request to the back end. So let's go ahead and replicate what a real request might look like from the front end. So we'll pass in an object and the only attribute that we need to pass in is the name because that created value is auto generated. So we'll just go ahead and set this value to item created. Now let's scroll down and send it as a post request. The data was sent and now we have a new response with an object and this means that a new item was added to the database. So let's jump back into the first endpoint that we created and let's see this listed out with all the other items and here we go and now we see item number four. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you got some good insights and feel much more prepared to take the next step in learning about the Django REST framework.